from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English. Winner of the Southern Oregon Television Award for Program of the Year and the award for Best Educational Program. I'm the host and producer, John Letts. Ramping Up Your English is an educational support program for intermediate English learners. It's a program for people from all language backgrounds. Ramping Up Your English is also for people of all ages. If you've already passed the beginning stages of learning English, and you want to reach higher levels of proficiency, this program is designed to meet your needs. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is animals. This is segment one of episode 59. In recent episodes, we visited North America, South America, and Africa to see and learn about some awesome animals. The thing is, those were all mammals. You may remember that mammals have backbones. They're warm-blooded. They give live birth to their young. They get oxygen from the air using lungs. They have fur, and they give milk to their young. But mammals are only one kind of animal. Let's see if you can guess what order of animals we're featuring today. These animals have backbones, and they get their oxygen from the air using lungs. So far, that's a lot in common with mammals. But wait! These animals are cold-blooded. They lay eggs to reproduce. They have scales instead of fur. Not only that, they do not give milk to their young. If you guess reptiles, you're right. Today we're looking at reptiles. If you chose a reptile as the animal you're researching, you'll want to pay close attention to this episode. There's nothing warm or fuzzy about reptiles, but there are some mighty interesting reptiles on this earth, so you might consider choosing one for your report if you haven't already chosen. One example is an alligator, as seen here. Reptiles seem odd to us because they're covered with scales and they're cold-blooded relying on the warmth from their environment to become active. This makes their movement seem odd. Let's learn a few things about alligators and other reptiles from this video. The sight of a snake can terrify some people. The beady eyes and flicking tongue send some people into a panic. Is this colorful serpent a cold-blooded killer? Yes, it's cold-blooded, as are all reptiles, and yes, it kills, kills insects, its main diet. In contrast to the colorful garter snake, this snake can grow to be the largest in the world. Meet the anaconda, a constrictor that can kill and eat a hog. I saw a nature show where an anaconda started to wrap itself around the host and put him in danger. This anaconda lives at the Oakland Zoo in California. Watch the glass for the excited child looking in. Snakes can fascinate as well as scare. Some think that snakes are slimy, but they're not. Snakes are covered with scales, as all reptiles are. The scales provide protection but snakes have other ways of protecting themselves. A snake strike is remarkably quick. Let's see that strike again in slow motion. That strike could result in a nasty bite wound but garter snakes are not poisonous. That can't be said for the rattlesnake. A bite by this snake could be deadly if not followed up by medical help. 
A rattlesnake's tail vibrates when it's about to strike, giving a warning. Rattlesnakes are very important to keeping their ecosystem in balance, and they're more likely to flee from people than strike if given an escape route. This snake is of no concern to you unless you're a small rodent. This is a gopher snake. People like me see beauty in snakes, plus we recognize that some snakes do us a great service. A more likable reptile is the turtle. This turtle is swimming in a drainage ditch in Louisiana, home to many reptiles. This turtle lives in another part of the world. Turtles have a hard shell for protection. This shell is a form of scales. It's part of a turtle's body. Despite the belief by some children, a turtle cannot crawl out of its shell any more than you could crawl out of your skin. Another animal with a shell is a tortoise, often confused with the turtle. Tortoises have been known to live more than a hundred years old. One way to tell them apart is to look at their feet. A tortoise has feet made for digging, while a turtle has feet designed for swimming. Like all reptiles, tortoises and turtles depend on their environment for controlling their body temperature. They often sit in the sun to warm themselves. They'll seek shade or water to cool off. Another cold-blooded reptile is the alligator. Alligators spend most of their time in the tepid waters of Louisiana and Florida. Alligators eat mostly turtles and other water-dwelling animals, but they're not picky eaters, and people can be in considerable danger if they're swimming in waters occupied by alligators. Dogs and cats can be endangered by alligators as well. Alligators are more likely to avoid people than to attack them, but gators that have been used to being fed, or if they're nesting and protecting their eggs, can become aggressive. It's safest to leave them alone. Alligators once received protection under the Endangered Species Act. They were being overhunted for their hides. Their population made a quick recovery, and they now can be hunted again. In the Florida Everglades, alligators somehow coexist with crocodiles. In Louisiana, alligators are alone. Crocodiles don't inhabit Louisiana. Only alligators. Viewed from above, an alligator's mouth appears wide and flat. You don't see teeth pointed up outside of the mouth on an alligator. Crocodiles are similar in appearance, but their mouth is more narrow. Don't worry, I'm not as close as this looks. This very old crocodile lives in Villahermosa, Mexico. These crocodiles are mating. 